Hello, Algebra 1 students. Let's learn how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. So this comes out of Chapter 9 in your textbook. Um, chapters, chapter 9, Sections 3 and 4, mostly. Um, but it's little bits and pieces from each one. So what we're going to be doing is factoring and then finding solutions for a quadratic equation, because we can't solve that the way we solve a usual equation. All right, let's start with definitions, as always. Okay. A quadratic equation is an equation that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So that's new. We've looked at equals y in class. We graphed them. We've looked at um, just the expression, so not including any of this over here, just the expression with um, no equal sign. And we've looked at, um, now we're looking at with an equals zero. A cannot be zero here because you have to have an x squared for this to be a quadratic equation. This is the standard form of a quadratic equation. So, what do we do with that? One way to solve a quadratic equation that looks like this is to graph the related quadratic function where you put instead of the zero, you replace it with a y. So y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The solutions of the equation are the x-intercepts of the related function. Because the x-intercepts are the points on that parabola where the y value is zero. These are the points here, right here and right here, where y equals zero. This one's two zero, and this one is negative two zero. So if the y equals zero, those are the values that make this equation up here true. So you can graph the related function and find the zeros those zeros, and that's the same thing as the solutions to that equation, which is great if they all come out to integral answers that we can read from a graph, but they don't. A quadratic equation can have two solutions, one solution, or no real number solutions. In a future course, you'll learn about solutions that are not real numbers, but in this course, we only talk about real number solutions. The solutions of a quadratic equation are the x-intercepts of the graph of the related function, also called roots and zeros. So roots, solutions, and zeros are all the same thing. All the same thing as x-intercept. The zero product property is what helps us solve these problems without graphing. For any real numbers a and b, if a times b is equal to zero, then a is equal to zero, or b is equal to zero, or both. Let's think about that. a times 7 equals zero. What's the only possible value for a? The only thing you can multiply by 7 and get zero is a zero. b times negative 8 equals zero. What's the only value for b? Again. The only way you get a product of zero is if one of the factors is zero. So your zero product property is what lets you take a quadratic function like this and take the factors, and remember factors here are not numbers being multiplied, they're binomials being multiplied. Those factors multiply and give you zero because that's what we said the right-hand side of these equations is going to be. We can take each of those individual factors, set them equal to zero. So in other words, take the factor and put equal zero after it. Same thing here. And you can then solve those little mini equations. <coughs> Excuse me. If x plus 3 equals 0, what's the value for x? Well, x equals negative 3. If x plus 2 equals 0, what's the value for x? x equals negative 2. Now that should make you think about something that we did in class this past class and hopefully now you're starting to see some connections okay or maybe Ivan I should do that for those of you who are seeing that connection let's try some examples all right let's use that zero product property this one is already solved um, excuse me factored for us so let's solve it so we're gonna take whoops we're gonna take this and say all right 4t plus 1 times t minus 2 we're gonna take each individual factor and set it equal to zero then you're going to solve. So this is 4t equals negative 1, and then divide by 4 
divide by 4. One value for t is negative 1 fourth. Add 2, add 2. The other value for t is positive 2. So two solutions for this equation. And one of the things that we were, are going to learn is that when um, the degree generally is equal to the number of solutions of the um, function. So this is a second degree or quadratic function or qu equation, excuse me, because when I multiply it, I'll multiply this and get a t squared in there, 4t squared to be specific. So second degree equation, two solutions. It is possible for those two solutions to be the same number, in which case it turns out effectively to only be one solution. We call that a double root, and we'll see some of those in class. But for right now, we're just going to stick to understanding number um, of the degree is the number of solutions. Oops, sorry. I dropped the iPad kind of on the desk. Let's take this away so we can see what's up here. How else can you write the solutions? Well, you can write it as a set. And so we write it in what's called roster form, which is with these curly braces here. So just put your squiggly parentheses, the smaller value, then the larger one, and close your squiggly parentheses. As long as they don't look like parentheses, parentheses, then we're good. Let's do another one. Okay, this one is not factored for me, and it's multiple choice, joy of joys. So we're gonna solve this. Of course you can work backwards and plug them in, but the point of learning the math is that we learn how to do it without having to do that. So we're gonna factor x squared plus eight x plus 15. So I want factors of 15 that add up to eight. What are the factors of 15 that add up to eight? That's right, they're three and five. And that means we can now take our individual factors and set them equal to zero and find our individual solutions. Still two solutions. So for this one, x equals negative three. And for this one, x equals negative five. So that means our correct answer must be A. All right. So that's what we did. We factored it. We found two integers with a sum of 8 and a product of 15. Let's try another one. Okay, so look at this one. 4x squared minus 21x equals 18. So the first thing I'm going to have to do here is subtract that 18. Now why... Why do I need to subtract that 18 from each side? Sorry about that. Didn't mean to move it. Why do I need to subtract that 18 from each side? Well, if you use a zero product property, one side here has to equal zero. So let's subtract 18 from each side first. And we get this. 4x squared minus 21x minus 18, which is extremely inconvenient to me because these are pretty large numbers. So that's ugly. Um, all right, so that's negative 72. So I need factors of negative 72 that add to negative 21. Okay, let's find factors of negative 72. Negative 1 and 72. No. Negative 2 and 36. No. Negative 3 and 3 into 72. 24. Hot dog, we found it. Except it's not negative 3 and 24. It's 3 and negative 24. So now we're going to factor by grouping. I like to put the negative first rather than the positive, because I find that it keeps me from making a sign mistake later. Um, I don't know that that's really true. Maybe it's just I've conditioned myself to do it that way. All right, and notice I'm talking while I work, which is very dangerous for Miss LeCombe, because I tend to make mistakes that way, but I promise to double check. And I don't know if anyone else um, who has a cat has noticed this, but a cat hair on an iPad screen makes your heart stop because it looks like a crack. Um, it's not, though. It's a cat hair. So there's that. Okay. So anyway, factored. Uh, we've got, so minus 24 plus 3 gives me negative 21, so I know that's right. I took out the GCF here, which was 4x, leaving x minus 6. GCF here was 3. Take it out, leave x minus 6. So 4x plus 3 times x minus 6, we're good. Finish it off by setting them equal to 0. 4x equals negative 3. So x equals negative three-fourths, because I divided both sides by four. And then the other one's easy. X just equals six. So my solutions are negative three-fourths and six. All right. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Just one little recap in our last slide, and we will be done with this video. All right. So let's talk. The factors of a quadratic expression are the binomials you get when you factor the expression. 
each. When you set those factors equal to zero and solve, you get the solutions to the related quadratic equation. Those solutions are the zeros, excuse me, roots, zeros, or x-intercepts of the related quadratic function. So, just to give you a quick example to recap what I'm talking about here. If I have x squared, we'll do a simple one, plus 3x plus 2. The factors are what you get when you factor it. Factors of 2 that add up to 3 would be 2 and 1. We set those individual factors equal to 0. And that gives me the solutions, negative 2 and negative 1, of the related equation, which is x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. If I now think about x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals y, or y equals that, I now know the x-intercepts. It's the same as the solutions to the equation. And if I was to graph it, I would see that on my calculator screen or on my paper if I did it by hand. All right, folks. That's all she wrote. I think I made this one nice and short, too. I'll see y'all in class.